Alexis Ness and Kaiser's past is finally revealed, and everything is now starting to make way more sense regarding them. What's going on everybody? It's Animalsu as always, bringing you guys the weekly Blue Lock Chapter 242 spoilers. If you all enjoy the content that I push out and would like to support me, please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, commenting on my videos, and even join the community discord if that interests you. Channel members and Nitro Boosters get exclusive sneak peeks into future videos, so just letting you all know. I hope you all continue to have an amazing day, please enjoy the video, and I'm sorry for still sounding sick. Ness's past is now revealed. He pursued magic in a world where he was all alone. A child Ness is then shown standing alongside his parents, who actually happen to be scientists. They taught Ness that everything in this world can be explained, and has a reason for it happening. One day in the past too, Ness even came home with a bleeding wound on his arm. He goes on to ask his father if it can be healed with healing magic. However, his father simply tells him to wash it and quickly disinfect it. Being the scientist he is, he explains that if the wound remains dirty, then bacteria could enter it and possibly spread to the surrounding area. Bro even starts talking about how it can lead to necrosis in the arm, with the worst case resulting in death for Ness. Now, I don't know what kind of parent goes on like this to worry their child, but I guess his father is just super straightforward and cold. Ness then even goes on to ask his mother if he's going to die, with her reassuring him that it's going to be okay. The possibility of death if he's treated properly is less than 0.01% as she tells him to start learning how to solve problems himself. It seems as though both of his parents are a little bit of self-absorbed assholes. Anyways, his siblings then begin to tease him as well, joking that he could possibly even get necrosis, calling him Necroness as a play on words. The chapter then cuts to a scene of Ness reading a book as he asks his brother and sister if one day he can use summoning magic too. They both go on to just call him an idiot however, explaining that magic is fiction and doesn't actually exist within reality. This mistreatment obviously does affect a young Ness, as he thinks in his head about how absent magic is from their home. Another scene is then shown of a young Ness playing in the snow, while wearing a wizard's hat and a cape while playing pretend. He's raising his staff and chanting random words, attempting to use summoning magic to bring the snowman he built to life. His siblings once again however come outside to ruin his fun, with even his brother snatching his staff and breaking it. They ask Ness what the hell he thinks he's doing, with his sister complaining that she can't focus on her research because of him. Ness tries to explain what he was doing, however his brother goes on to further break the staff, as his sister even kicks the snowman in. They tell him to never talk about magic again in their household, while even calling him an idiotic failure. They even go on to snitch to their parents about Ness playing magic once again, asking if they're sure he's even their child. Once again, however, their parents just answer like robots, complaining that they're bringing snow into the house and touching stuff. Their father tells Ness that as a scientist, it's their mission to research unknown events to then clarify them. They don't need people in the house who believe in unexplainable things, as their very work is to explain things. Obviously, this causes Ness to begin crying at this mistreatment, as his siblings even walk away while saying that he must have the recessive gene. The poor young Ness just continues to cry while sitting there, surrounded by his broken staff, snowman, and his book. He wonders how great scientists can really be, considering they can't explain why he likes magic and can't even understand this sadness that he feels. A glimpse of Ness's imagination is then shown, as he explains that there has to be magic within this world. When he first read the book that he has on it, he became so excited that he literally couldn't sleep. The feeling inside of him became irresistible, as he searched for magic everywhere around him. He appreciates and believes in things that can't be explained in this world, such as his feelings and sadness. A slightly older Ness is then shown to be standing outside of the entrance to a stadium, as soccer seems to be one of these unexplainable things that he loves. Watching another player shoot to then score a goal, this young Ness is just mesmerized by watching. This is magic. A single goal can engulf people in ecstasy, causing a shaking stadium, a pleasure that blows away your sanity. I found it. Soccer players are wizards. This is what I want to do. I'm going to become a soccer player. It seems like this was the moment Ness finally found his true calling, that also more than likely led him to meeting Kaiser. He practiced and played his heart out, and despite this, his family still tried to bring him down in every way they could. His siblings called him an idiot and his dreams impossible, with even his own father praying for his downfall. A young Ness however persisted and played anyway, wanting to prove to his family that he could make it. He wants to one day become a pro that represents Germany, becoming a person who can cast and share this magic with the entire world. The chapter then cuts to a scene of Ness scoring his own goal during a game, as his teammates all huddle around him. They call him amazing and basically unbeatable in their town, with one teammate even saying that he should go pro right now. 
His coach then even tells Ness that if he's interested, he should consider trying out for the team Bastard Munich. This seems to be exactly what happens, as the chapter then cuts to Ness in the midst of a tryout game. He's a bit intimidated by the players around him at first, as they all seem to be big and strong themselves. He knows that he can do this however, as if he performs well on this practice match, he could have a chance to sign a pro contract with Bastion Munich, opening up the path to his dreams. Ness is on Team White, dribbling up the field, as he then sprints forward passing number 7 from the red team. One of his teammates calls for a pass from Ness too, however he seems to be marked by another player. Ness knows that it's already little too late, however he understands the situation and goes to pass anyway. Well at least he was going to before another player caught up to him. Ness is baffled that this player managed to catch up and get possession off of him, as his opponent even manages to go and score off of this. Alexis is thinking about how different this environment of play is, as he realizes that this is the pro level that he's aiming for. His individual skills and imagination are just barely competitive to this level, but it seems like his tactical sense, coordination, and recoverability are all not on par. He wonders that if his magic soccer isn't good enough for the world, as he once again gets the ball stolen from him. His teammates then even begin to ask what he's doing, calling him slow and mocking that he's gotten the ball stolen way too many times. Ness tells them to shut up however over and over as he then falls to the ground, remembering what his family once said to him. There's no such thing as magic. People who believe in unexplainable things don't belong in our house. You're a stupid idiot and a failure. Just as Ness was about to cave in and give up on his magic, a voice then calls out above him causing him to look up. Hey, you fucking wimp. Do you believe in what's impossible? This was the voice of Michael Kaiser, who stood above looking down at Ness. The magic he continued to believe in was denied. His fleeting, empty dream was quickly lost. In this world where darkness is at its peak, a savior, Michael Kaiser, reaches out. Next chapter is obviously once again titled, The Magician and the Blue Rose, as it simply is just a second part to this backstory. I was really surprised with how well they did this backstory chapter compared to the previous ones, as I felt like it just flowed a lot better and really kept me interested. Now I know a lot of people happen to be professional Ness haters, so I just have to ask, did this chapter manage to make any of you feel bad for him, or maybe just not hate him as much? I personally felt really horrible for how his family acted towards him, and it gave me a much better understanding around his whole magic theme. Also, what's with soccer players having their parents to absolutely hate them, because the Blue Lock universe seems to be showing a consistent theme of this. I guess we'll just have to see what Kaiser's side of this is going into the next chapter, and honestly, I cannot wait another week. As always, if you guys would like to stay updated with everything Blue Lock related, please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, commenting on my videos, and even join the community discord if that interests you. Nitro boosters and channel members get exclusive sneak peeks into my future videos, so just making sure that you all know that. I hope you all continue to have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.